The Prowl has um, it's been a really interesting uh, piece to work on. For me as an art director, it, it's basically you know a new generation of style that we get to work on. You know, when I first joined the project, there was a lot of things already established. So the Asperia Prowler essentially is a reproduction of a Tavarin-based rapid deployment ship. Essentially, yeah, it's, you, you start with a blank canvas. You talk to the writers and get the law. Uh, speak to you know speak to you know the other art directors you know kind of this is probably the first time we've really all probably sat down right before the get-go and just said okay what are you know what are the things that we were focusing on for these guys Josh had already done some character work so we took a little bit from that but you know characters don't look like ships necessarily you know humans don't look like, look like attack helicopters and according to the law the architecture is meant to be based on Henoism. So we've sort of been going for a very sort of slab-sided, uh, you know, brutalist kind of feel. That's, you know, that was kind of the initial brief, slight hint of, you know, Egyptian. As we discussed further, I mean, that's that was there at the start and it's very slightly st still there, but in total, this has had six concept artists on it from start to finish, uh, because we had a very tight deadline. There's always a high amount of pressure because you, you know, it's all exploratory basically and, you know, I've got to give Chris some things to work with basically, so, um, you know, concept artists work in different ways, so I've kind of used that to my advantage, so uh, initially we did a two-week sprint, coming up with just four very sort of different looks basically, different configurations, different styles, you know, vertical or horizontal or... Um, uh, no cockpits, cockpits, all sorts of things, and then just present it to, to Chris. Say, hey, Chris, what do you, you know, what do you like? And so he's like, well, like a bit of A, a bit of B, which is fine because I kind of liked all the designs anyway. So it doesn't matter what Chris picks as long as you know I can get behind it. That's the, you know that's cool. In my head, I imagine it. You know, you'd be using it in a traditional sense. You know, you'd be flying into hostile zones. You know, maybe you'll have two or three of them. They'll come in land you know it's the full sort of black hawk down treatment troops troops jump out and then the pilot and co-pilot just whiz off off to safety the emotional feel of it basically you know when you see this you know it should be just like heck you know what's what's this flying in it's been more that dealing with shape language the cut of the lines you know um, it's quite minimalist so the lines are you know there for a reason generally i've been calling it like a radar deflection kind of material so it's kind of like a bird's nest it kind of fe feeds into the whole avian feel of the of the ship and then the interior we've gone quite different to what we've been doing for the human ships it's basically quite oppressive it's it's like this dark red and it's all dark red I was sort of thinking at the time that you know basically when you see the troops come out, if they come out of this exit, because there's multiple exits, right? You know, it's coming out of the mouth of hell, basically. So it, it's just got this dark red, and then you've got this um, oppressive black hole kind of thing. Um, and then as you make your way through to the cockpit, the red slowly fades off, essentially, and it goes more towards uh, blacks and greys, with just a hint of red. Just so for pilots, there's less distraction. And we've kind of just sort of been featuring like a sort of three-line sort of motif. Um, which we took from the character design that Josh did, and that that is fed into the ship basically in lots of subtle ways. There's a heavy avian feel with the ship, some in subtle ways, some not so subtle. Fans will see straight away that it's essentially, it's got some large VTOLs basically, um, and in landed mode, it's you know it's a real hunched, aggressive, it's a bird of prey, you know, it, it's classic basically. And then it also has uh, like a special, special ability, special feature, whatever you want to call it, of sort of these defensive blades that, that come out. We're yet to still fully realize you know, uh, the sort of theory behind it all, like, the, you know, in terms of law, but um, uh, certainly, uh, you know, it helps with flight, low maneuverability, but also when it comes into land, VTOLs go down, all the blades pop out, which people may call feathers, but I call them blades, um, and they provide like a defensive position. So when the troops come out <clears throat> and they, you know, that again, you, you've just got these huge doors that open up, and rather than just one large, um, uh, sing, you know, single sliding door, which often these ships have. We've got four individual, essentially, gates, and those have Tavar and shield tech in them. So it's kind of like the uh, the Idris in the hangar, you know, you fly out and you go through the force field. This is like a personal version. That's kind of one of the 
uh, the visual hooks of the ship. So the ship could be flying along with all its armored doors up, but it's still got its energy shields there. So the troops can, you know, you'll be able to look out. This is what I hope, right? And you'll be there in your harness and you're just looking out and you're just seeing the landscape go by or whatever it is. The other two visual features, avian features, we've got a split tail, so it's like a swallow tail. And then the head, the head is obviously very sort of eagle-like. And this time we've been, you know, we've been able to essentially remove the cockpit. There's a head to this thing, but there's no, it's essentially one-way glass. So you can't see in, but you can see out, the pilot can see out, so it gives us this really nice monolithic kind of armoured feel. And again, lending to that whole sort of Tavar and Warrior, hardcore heroism. And so we've just been building on that. I think as players, they'll, they'll really dig it. And I mean, there's nothing like it in, in the Star Citizen universe at the moment.